Hello everyone. I hope you all are doing very well. And here in this session, I am going to demonstrate you water jug problem with some unique facts, with some useful and knowledgeful information throughout the session. So watch this session till the end. And I bet you that you will definitely get each and every concept very much clear. So let's start. We are starting from the very basic concept about water jug problem. That is the problem scenario. Water jug problem is a classic problem of artificial intelligence. Specifically, it is used in the area of automated planning and decision making. This problem involves two jugs of different sizes, one of which holds a certain amount of water and other is empty. The goal is to use jugs to measure out the specific quantity of water. So we here can take J1 and J2 as a two jugs and we can assume the capacity of J1 as a X and we can assume the capacity of J2 as a Y. At the end, we are in a requirement of Z amount of water in a particular jug and we need to deduce it. The challenge is to find the sequence of steps filling, emptying, and transferring water between jugs that will accomplish this goal. Using only the jugs and the water that is available. This problem is used to test artificial intelligence algorithms, problem solving abilities, planning, and decision making. Right? So before going to actual problem, let's first understand why to learn this problem today? Still today we are learning this problem. So what is the industrial aspect of this problem? Where you can redefine this problem? Where you can use this problem in real world? So we are going to see here the real world applications. The first one we can use it in water management for optimizing the distribution of water in any particular channel or network of the reservoirs or pipes. We can use it in the robotics for developing some smart algorithms for robots, for manipulating the containers and pouring them. We can use it in logistics for optimizing the loading and unloading of liquids in transport, transportation systems and making it easier way much easier than today. In cooking, for a specific amount of liquids in cooking, like uh, any particular liquid, you can say that soya sauce or any particular oil. In chemistry, for optimizing chemical reactions involving mixing of liquids. In industrial process, for control the flow of liquids in industrial process such as manufacturing, refining, chemical processing, etc. And in gaming, obviously, for creating very create fun games and challenging games like puzzles. So these are some of the important real world applications for which we are learning this problem. So before learning this problem, you must know what this problem is going to get us in future. Where is the real time application of it? Right? Okay. Now, one of the unique fact that I am going to give you about water jet problem is that it is an example of anti-complete problem, which means that there is no any non-efficient algorithm that can always find the solution in a reasonable amount of time. It means that water jet problem is a computationally expensive and solving it would require massive computational power. So you must know about it. It is an anti-complete problem. In a class of problems, some problems are peak problems, some are anti-problems, some are anti-hard problems, out of which it is anti-complete. Computationally, it is expensive. No efficiently known algorithm yet. Okay, let's come exactly to the water jet problem then. Basically, we are having two water jugs whose capacities are X and Y liters. And initially, both these jugs are empty. Also, even that there is an infinite amount of water available, infinite amount of water is available. We can use as, many, as much water as we can. The jugs do not have any markings so that we can understand how, the, how much this jug is completely filled 
how much this jug is filled up to what what parameter what quantity we cannot know it because no markings are there and one can perform the following operations on the jug we can fill any of the jugs completely with the water we can pour water from one jug to other until other jug is either empty or full it means that we can make other jug completely full or completely empty we can transfer the water from jug 1 to jug 2 in such a manner and we can empty any of the jug the task is to determine whether it is possible to measure z liter of water using both the jugs and if we can and it, it is true print the possible way this is the water jug problem correct so before solving any particular problem let's see the production rules that we have defined that we can use here x comma y x for this production rule says that we can fill 4 gallon of jug this problem this problem was asked by many interviewers this was asked by tcs capgemini ibm and many many startups companies in their interview so it is important to learn this problem many many interviewers have asked this problem the same to same problem x comma y y less than 3 fill 3 gallon of jug if our states is x comma y x greater than 0 it means that i am completely emptying the 4 gallon jug jug 1 if x comma y y greater than 0 means i am emptying 3 gallon jug this is rule 4 Rule number five is x comma y x plus y greater than equals to four or y greater than zero means I am pouring water from three gallon jug into four gallon jug until four gallon jug is full. So these are certain set of rules. This is just certain set of rules and we have defined it. Why we have defined it? Because we need to solve some problems and for defining some algorithm, for designing some algorithm, for implementation. Because as a manually, if I will, if anybody will say me do, do the task, I will take both the jugs and will do the calculations. And definitely in certain attempts, I can give the solution. But if the same task machine will do, how it can perform? For them, we need to define certain set of rules. That is why we are defining this production rules. Okay, rule number six, x comma y, x plus y greater than equals to three or x greater than zero. In that case, pour water from four gallon jug into three gallon jug until three gallon jug is full. In the same case, if this operator becomes less than, it means that we are still pouring the water from three to four, but there is no guarantee that the uh, next jug will become full. Similarly here, pouring water from four to three but no guarantee that third gallon jug will full. But in rule number five and six, it is guaranteed that we are going to full the, the respective jug. And in nine, if we got zero comma two, it means that the smaller jug is having two liter of water or two gallon of water. In that case, we are going to transfer it to the first one, two comma zero. So we have defined some nine set of rules here. And using this, what we need to do, let's say we are having jug one, the capacity of this is four liter or four gallon. And we are having here jug two, whose capacity is three gallon or three liter. And at the last we need two liter of water in jug one. So initial state is zero comma zero. This is our initial state. And what we need as a goal state, in goal state we require two comma zero. So for that, we must have to implement some certain rules. If I am going to implement rule number two first, what is rule number two? Fill three gallon jug. So I am going to implement rule number two first. Fill three gallon jug first. So initially it is zero, zero. And thereafter, if I am going to fill the three gallon jug, it would become like this, zero, comma, Three. Correct or not? It is initial. In first iteration, it is going to be so. In second iteration, what I need to do? I need to pour out the water of second jug into first jug. Which rule it is? Just see. If you are going to see, we need to implement 
रूल नंबर फॉर ऑल वाटर फ्रॉम थ्री गैलन जग टू फोर गैलन जग रूल नंबर सेवन आई नीड टू इम्प्लीमेंट सो हियर आई एम गोइंग टू इम्प्लीमेंट here i have implemented rule number 2 now i am implementing rule number 7 pouring all the water of jug 2 into jug 1 so it would become 3 comma 0 <coughs> and this is one of the eligible step that i can do again what i am doing i am repeating the step 2 r2 so in third iteration i am again going to fill out the second second word so according to rule number 2 i can fill it up so the the current state would become 3 comma initially all both were empty thereafter second jug i have poured out in third in second iteration i have poured second jug into first jug so it becomes 3 0 and right now i have again refill second jug so 3 comma 3 we can do this in fourth iteration what i am doing this time i need to pour jug One jug two to jug one. I will pour some water from jug two to jug one, but this time jug one will become full. It means that rule number five I need to implement. So this time I am implementing rule number five, and this time it will become four comma two, isn't it? Now what I am going to do? I am going to empty jug one completely. So it would in fifth iteration it would become zero comma two. I have just emptied all the water from jug one. Which step it is? Step number three, completely emptying the four gallon jug, right? And in sixth iteration, I am going to implement rule number nine. If it is zero two, I am going to pour out all water from jug two to jug one, three gallon jug to four gallon jug. It would become two zero, isn't it? so this is some of the steps that i have performed and using which i have reached at the goal state and for the for for that you can see this this is a stat space tree this is a stat space tree isn't it initially 0 0 thereafter we may have two choice either fill first jug completely or second jug completely uh, we have gone to this step thereafter we have poured all the water of second jug into first 3 0 but we can do 4 3 or 0 0 also we can empty second jug at that time and we can refill first jug again we can refill the first jug again to its full capacity but we have chosen this this is stat space tree because we are using breadth first search for solving this problem and using bfs you know we need to take q as a data structure we need to use recursion because if we want a stat space tree recursion will give you a stat space tree and a stat space tree will have all the records along with that that at the particular time which jug is having how much water in it so that for particular step by step record we are we can we can make a stat space tree also after 30 it would 33 then 42 then 02 then 20 so this is about water jug problem this is how this is how you have to solve it let's see the algorithm this is some uh, this is uh, one of the algorithm that we performed what we did uh, pop out the first element of the queue so initially both the jugs were empty and we are performing some steps so initially pop out first element of the queue if the Value of popped element is equals to z written true. Else written false. So let x left and y left are amount of water left in jugs respectively. Now perform the fill operation. If the value of x left less than equals to x, we need to insert x left comma y into the hash map. Since this step hasn't been visited any. And some water can still be poured into the jug. And if the value of y left is less than y, insert y left into x into the hash map. Since this state hasn't been visited, some water can still be poured out. So basically, this is the fill operation method in the algorithm that if z is possible, and how we can say that z is possible if the value is x, if the value is y. 
and they are saying that here it is 4 liter here it is 3 liter and we need 5 liter obviously it is not possible how we can hold 5 liter water in a single bucket in a single jug but if they are asking for 1 liter if they are asking for 2 liter if they are asking for 3 liter if they are asking for 4 liter or they are asking for 0 liter they all are possible values of z and for that we can perform this algorithm right so Okay, next one. Perform empty operation if we need. We can perform empty operation like this. 0, 1. If this state is not visited, insert it into the half map. And since we can have empty any of the jug. Similarly, the state x underscore left, comma 0 is not visited. Insert it into the half map since we can empty any of the jug. And we can thereafter transfer the water from jug 1 to jug 2 according to the need. If we want to pour second jug into the first jug, we can do it like this. The minimum of x minus x left comma y. It means that we are pouring from second jug to first jug. And minimum of x, x underscore left comma y minus y left. So we are pouring first jug to second jug. Therefore, in this case, this would be this. And in the first case, when we are pouring water from second to first, we need to add some water from second jug. Basically, this is the content that was remained in the second jug that we need to add here. And the same content we need to subtract from second jug. In the second case, if we are adding some water from first to second jug, so we need to add that content into the second jug and the same content we need to subtract it, which we have written in the form of some keywords, which you can define on your own also. So basically, this approach is working according to the capacity of two jugs. Let's say the capacity of jug one is X. If I represent it in the N and if I represent the capacity of jug two, that is Y in M, we can say that the time complexity would be n cross m. That is nothing but the capacity of jug 1 and jug 2. Because we need to implement all the possible combinations. We, we cannot guarantee certainly that this will be so and this will be so. Because it is an anti-complete problem. Similarly, for space complexity, I will say n into m, order of n into m will be the time complexity. Because we are doing the operations on jug 1 and jug 2 completely and we are doing all the possible operations that we can do. Correct. So this is about water jug problem that you need to understand. This is the algorithm. You can simply implement it using any of the language using Java, C++, Python. Interviewers will not mind anything. Because in front of interviewers, if you got the problem of water jug, you can answer it using Python, you can answer it using Java, you can answer it using C++. It is a standard problem of AI. Right now, industry is asking. Many times asked by startups and TCS, Infosys, IBM companies. So prepare it. Even though if you can answer it in terms of algorithm, they can consider some way. So important problem, right? So go through it. Have any doubt, confusion, queries, please feel free to ask. So water jug problem is basically we need to achieve the target state if it is possible performing the possible eligible rules. Right? Okay. Real-time applications, I think, done. NP complete, done. Definition, done. And... Uh, Okay, production rules are done. The methodology is done. Statistics tree is done. Algorithm is done, right? Now you can implement it. Thank you so much, guys. Have a very much, very nice day. Jai Hind, Jai Bhat.